the muzzleloaders.com podcast, your source for all things muzzleloader. All right, welcome back to the muzzleloaders.com podcast. Uh, I am joined today by Nate Savage and Caleb Andrews, hey. our uh, general manager and customer service manager. So uh, really excited to have you guys on the podcast again. Yeah. This is a, you know, a, a familiar crowd for people. So it seems um, like we just did this. Yeah, it does really seem like that, doesn't <laughs> it? Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, powder and primers. And so all different types of ignitions, um, different types of powder that are available on the market today. Um, really, there's a, a lot of really cool stuff in the black powder industry as far as that goes. So um, we're going to dive in. We're kind of going to go through um, not history, but we're going to start with like the oldest powder. We're going to start with true black powder, you know, your Go X Swiss. And we're going to move through that in segment one here. We're going to move into, you know, Blackhorn 209, Fire Stick Ignition, mm. stuff like that. So um, let's go ahead and kick things off with the uh, so Go X Shoots in and Swiss all make what's called a true black powder. So uh, versus like a black powder substitute, like triple seven pyrodex stuff like that. Um, and so Caleb, I know that you, as a customer service manager, you have a lot of, uh, feedback from a lot of our members of our community that use true black powder. I was hoping you can kind of go into what some of that is and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. So the biggest, um, group of people that I've chatted with that use real black powder are flintlock shooters. Okay. Um, and the biggest reason is, um, if you're shooting a flintlock, you actually have to have two sizes of powder to be able to ignite it. So you have mm -hmm. to have a 2FG or a 2FG equivalent inside the barrel and a 4FG or a very fine pan powder um, to be up in the pan. And that is what will ignite first when the flint falls and, and sparks it. Um, so you need that really, really, really fine pan powder um, for that, that flint to spark and ignite. Um, you can only find 4FG in a true black powder. Um, to my knowledge, I have never seen a black powder substitute that goes as fine as 4FG. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, very popular in our flintlock shooters. Um, and that's around the, you know, anyone who's using a flintlock, that's what they're going to use. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, I just know if you do get true black powder, um, there is a few caveats you need to, to learn about storing it. Um, true black powder is a little more volatile than a black powder substitute. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you just have to make sure you're being really diligent and and where you're storing it. Um, and then it's, you know, it's kind of in a place that's free from any static or where you could get static buildup. Yep. And it does have to be in a, uh, a wooden box too. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. There's a certain diameter that it has to, the box has to be but um, it does have to be in a wooden box, you know, mm -hmm. very, a lot of restrictions as far as that goes, because true black powder is so um, it's very explosive. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to be very careful with that. You can only have a certain amount. Mm -hmm. uh, that amount is different all over the place, but you can only have a, a limited amount. So if you're looking to get some of this, make sure you check with your local sheriff's department, yeah. figure out what the laws are, restrictions, things like that. Um, and Caleb, what you mentioned about the 4F powder, mm -hmm. You can get, uh, you know, any of these true black powders in a, a 2F, a 3F, or a 4FG powder. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people that I've chatted with at rendezvous and things like that, they prefer true black powder because it ignites so much easier. Mm, you sure. know? So it is more volatile, but you do get a better ignition from it. And so if you're using a percussion cap like a number 11, um, or if you're using like a number 10 in a pistol or something like that, then you're, you know, it's just a little bit more consistent that way. Yeah. And, you know, we chat with people that have ignition issues because that happens sometimes, especially in uh, either people using traditional guns or in Northwest states where they're mm -hmm. using a musket cap ignition. And so one thing I'd recommend is if you're having ignition problems, look into getting some true black powder because it's going to ignite a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so definitely worth looking into as far as that goes. And we're going to kind of contrast uh, these, this true black powder with black powder substitute. And so, um, we're going to contrast that with, you know, your triple seven, your pirate X, which are, they make two F and three FG equivalents. And we're going to kind of talk about why they're different advantages, disadvantages to both. So that, um, if you're looking at, you know, getting some powder, making a powder change that you have all the information necessary. So, um, nice thing with the triple seven and pirate X is, uh, it is a little bit less volatile. There's less restrictions. Nate, I know you you deal a lot with our shipping. Um, I was hoping mm -hmm. maybe you could go into maybe some of the shipping restrictions around the black powder substitute um, because, you know, oftentimes, you know, we do have to charge a hazmat fee and that's yeah. an additional yeah. fee. And that's the case with any powder or primer that you order online. 
Um, I was hoping you can kind of go into why that is and some of the things like that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I did just want to hit on one thing on the black powder uh, first. This that you know we didn't hit on was that it is much more corrosive mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. is kind yeah. of a big thing too. If you're thinking about Pyrodex, you know, like a black powder substitute versus black powder is it definitely takes more um, more care with your rifle with the black powder because it is way more corrosive. Yeah. But yeah, as far as shipping restrictions, uh, yeah, there is a hazmat fee with all hazardous materials just due to the nature of it. If there's a car wreck or something like that, you know, this is high liability. Sure. It has to go in a special, special box that's extra thick, has to be well packed, um, you know, specific stickers on it. And, mm-hmm. you know, if it's not packaged exactly right, uh, they return it. Yep. <laughs> yep, we yeah, turn it back to us <laughs> and then we get to ship it again. So, yep. uh, yeah, there is a lot that goes, that goes on with, with shipping those. So, yeah. yeah and that's, that's with the black powder substitute Yeah, and with true black powder, there's even more restrictions. Yes. And, um, you know, one thing to think about is oftentimes going directly through a company like go X is your best bet as far as getting that, because it's difficult to find dealers that not only have it, because of all the storage restrictions, but also are able to ship it. Um, and so, you know, that's something to keep in mind too, if you're looking going that way. Uh, and so, and there are definitely are um, advantages to that. So I know mm-hmm. you, you looked like you had something to say too. Uh, the, the advantages of, of what? Could you reiterate that? Oh, word? sure. Yeah. So just like the advantage of black powder versus um, uh, just like black powder substitute oh, or vice versa. Yeah, so. Absolutely. And I just wanted to expound on what you already said about uh-huh. it's, it's a lot easier to ignite. And so I just wanted to specifically touch on um, uh, consistency and efficiency where sure. you really neg- or cut back on a lot of hang fires, misfires. If you have a really easy to ignite powder, you know that that every time you shoot, you know, that powder is go- going to ignite properly. It's going to shoot how you want it to. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause yeah, there's nothing quite a you know as thrilling as as you know the the flint comes down or the percussion cap goes off but then there's that slight delay and then your powder goes off it's like if you have true black powder you know that it's going to ignite a lot more quicker a lot more efficiently and so you really reduce those hang fires and misfires yeah and one thing you were saying too earlier that i wanted to touch on is the uh, 4f pan powder versus 2f and 2f in the barrel um and that is that's our recommendation lot you know you're, there's lots of people that will use 3f in the pan mm. you're just not going to get the consistent ignition and when we make a recommendation we want to recommend the best and yeah, so yeah, absolutely if you have 4f true black powder um with 2f in the barrel um you can even use 3f a lot of people will use 3fg powder in mm. rifles as well um, just because it is easier to ignite yeah but um we just that's what we recommend and so you know if you're doing something else you know, feel free to do that, but that's just what we have found to be the most effective yeah. way to do it. So, um, and there is, you know, it is nice to have the, the Pyrodex, like Nate was saying, cause it's less corrosive. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're able to, uh, have something that you're able to get a little more, uh, easily and it's less corrosive. So there's that advantage, but you know, the, the true black powder is going to ignite a little bit yeah. easier. Yeah, so absolutely. that's really the main differences between those two mm-hmm. is those two things. And so, uh, moving on from that, let's talk about Blackhorn 209, which is be- it's been around a while, but it is you know newer technology. Yeah. And there's some other caveats that go with that, and we're going to get into uh, different things like that with how much of this you can use in paramounts and stuff like that. So, um, Caleb, why don't you go ahead and give us the rundown on Blackhorn 209? Yeah. So Blackhorn 209 right now is extremely popular, mm-hmm. um, and there's a lot of reasons why. You know, it burns very clean. It burns very hot. Um, however, there are a few, um, kind of nuances that you need to know about before you start using it. Um, it is a modern powder that you would use like in a modern inline, um, because it has a very high heat tolerance. Um, a lot of ignition systems won't be able to ignite it properly. Mm, So we recommend using Blackhorn 209 with a 209 or a large rifle primer ignition muzzle loader. Um, and you need to make sure that if you're using a 209 ignition to use a 209 Magnum primer. Yep. Um, that's going to give you the best um, efficient ignition. Um, if you're using Blackhorn 209 in a flintlock or any sort of percussion cap, like a number 11, number 10, or a musket, you will probably run into some hang fire misfire issues just because they're just not hot enough to, mm-hmm. to ignite it properly. You're going to be frustrated. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah exactly. And, and even... On the customer service end, I've chatted with a lot of members of our um, muzzleloaders community who 
um, we're using a 209 ignition with Blackhorn, having hang fires, having misfires. Like you said, very mm-hmm. frustrated. All they had to do it was upgrade to a, a 209 Magnum primer. Mm-hmm. Took care of all of their ignition issues. Yeah, just that little yeah. extra bit of heat. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so along with that, as far as just because Blackhorn 209 is really efficient as well, you actually have to dial back your charges by 20% when comparing it to a standard load of say like triple seven or pyrodex so simply said that just means if you're trying to get a standard 100 grain charge per volume that is only 80 grains of blackhorn per volume Mm -hmm. um and it's equivalent so you you can already see you know blackhorn is really efficient you can dial back your charge by 20 percent, and it will be the equivalent to you know standard load and i just wanted to reiterate that he said by volume Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> volume. Yeah. <laughs> you could say that again. By volume. Yeah. yeah. It's very yeah. important. Wait, now that that does bring up the question is with Blackhorn two nine, it's becoming increasingly popular to measure by weight. Yes. Um, and so we have a few of the weight measurements here. And so I wanted to uh, go over some of those. So in a standard magnum muzzleloader, like Caleb was saying, 120 grains of blackhorn by volume is going to be your maximum charge. Mm-hmm. Um, if you wanted to weigh that out, that's 84 grains by weight. And so, uh, you know, and when you're weighing that out, and so another another popular charge, you have 80, 100, and 120. So those are your main popular charges with Blackhorn 209 um, by volume. So if you're wanting to go with a volumetric measurement or a weight measurement to that, 80 grains by volume is equivalent to 56 grains by weight. So they are not the same by any means. Um, you know, yeah. if you put 120 grains by weight in your muzzle loader, you're going to have a very bad day. You're going to have a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, don't do that. Um, but, you know, honestly, volumetric measurements has kind of been the standard for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, only recently is the uh, weight measurements kind of taking on popularity with the extra precision, people mm-hmm. wanting to shoot longer distances and all that stuff. Yeah, I think that kind of goes with the newer inline stuff and people wanting to be really precise and sure. shoot those, yeah. you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred yard shots. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we were talking about recently about how the long range muzzle loading has been really kicking up and being able to measure by weight is much more mm-hmm. precise and you're able to make sure you're shooting the same charge every time. So it's the same. Yeah. Um, and so Caleb, do you want to go ahead and go over the paramount measurements? So, yeah. So the, the CVA paramount lineup, it, including, you know, the paramount, the paramount HTR that is coming out and then the paramount pro, mm-hmm. um, they recommend using Blackhorn 209 as the sole powder in that gun. And th- the reason being is that's what they've been achieving. Those consistent, amazing velocities. The, um, the performance of it is is based around Blackhorn 209 as your powder choice. And so um, there is actually different volume and weight um, recommendations for each new caliber that they have Mm -hmm. too. So let's start out with the new 40 caliber Paramount options from CVA um, in the CVA H or the Paramount HTR and the Paramount Pro. Um, So the maximum you want to use of Blackhorn is 150 grains per volume which is equivalent to 105 grains per weight. And that is only in the 40 caliber. Um, Once you jump up to the 45 caliber, um, you're looking at 160 grains per volume, which is 112 grains per weight. Um, Once you jump up to the 50 caliber, as seen in the Paramount Pro, you're right at 170 grains per volume or 119 grains per weight. Yep. So I hope you had your notepad out. <laughs> yeah. Taking notes. We're trying to or hit rewind. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah. Uh, the goal behind all this is we just want to answer questions that, uh, that you guys get on the phones a lot. And so, um, yeah, that way you guys have that resource and, um, yep. you're able to reference back to it. Like, Oh, what was it again? You're able to come back to this podcast and take a listen. And so I'll just reiterate too. I like Caleb was very organized. I'm going to reiterate the mm-hmm. other ones. So 80 grains of volume is 56 grains by weight. 100 grains of volume is 70 grains by weight and 120 of volume is 84 grains by weight. So um, just wanted to reiterate that. You can take notes, do whatever you need to do with that information. But um, Blackhorn 2.9 is awesome. Yeah. It's clean burning um, and you're able to get uh, a lot of shots without having to swab. You know, we still recommend mm-hmm. swabbing after every other shot just to, for consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, Blackhorn is much easier to clean out too. Um, and that's actually going to kind of lead us into our next segment, 
um, which is pelletized powder. And um, we're actually going to have Caleb kind of dive into that as well, which is some of the different pellets that we recommend yeah. and the difference specifically between pelletized powder and loose powder, you know, advantages, yeah. disadvantages. So, yes, yeah, so that, that's that's one of the big, biggest questions that I answer is, hey, what kind of powder should I use? Do I use pelletized? Do I use loose powder? And there's pros and cons to both. Mm -hmm. Really, a lot of it boils down to personal preference. Once you're educated, it's like, oh, this is the route I want to go or like state regulations. State regulations. <laughs> sure. Yep. State regulations. A lot of states, um, including Oregon, Idaho, and Colorado, just to name a few, benefit the best with, with loose powder. And that's what the state regulation requires. And so obviously there's a ton of technical information to dive in there. But yeah, as far as just the biggest differences between pelletized powder and, and loose powder is pelletized powder is preformed. Yep. It is already measured out for you, generally in a 50 grain increment. Uh -huh. Not all the time, but yeah. but generally. And so really you can throw two 50 grain pellets down your, your barrel, throw a bullet on top of it, and you're loaded. You don't have to worry mm -hmm. about a powder measure or a powder flask. It's it's just pre-pressed into a preformed pellet. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously the pros to that is it's easy. It's efficient. You don't have to spend as much time and money getting accessories to allow you to measure powder. Um, you can just get easily, um, you know, on target at the range or in a hunting scenario. Um, the takeaway, or I would say the con to that is you're not getting that precision, right? Yeah. Like a hundred grains will work great in most scenarios, but what if your gun really likes 105, 110 grains? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. There's not really the versatility that you get with measuring out your powder consistently. Mm -hmm. um, and so r really that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, with loose powder, you do have to put a little more legwork into it. You are actively measuring out the powder in one form or another. If you're putting it in a speed loader or just right down the barrel, you always have to pre-measure it. Yeah. And there are different types of pelletized powders as well that react differently oh to yeah mm -hmm. like imr white hots or you know pirate x or triple seven or whatever you're going to be using or the fire stars you know that's a popular yeah. one as well so absolutely um so with that we're about out of time for this uh section we're gonna take a quick break we are gonna dive back into pellets at the very next section so stay tuned we're gonna go over some more of the imr white hots fire stars things like that so stay tuned All right, thanks for bearing with us through that break. Um, we're going to dive right back into it with the pelletized powder. Nate touched on it before our break about the uh, you know different types. We had the Fire Stars, the uh, IMR White Hots, all those different types that do all do different things. You also have Triple Seven Pyrodex. They make pellets. There's Triple Seven Magnum pellets. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Yeah. Um, and one thing I did want to mention, Caleb did a good job of this is. Um, you know, rec we recommend pelletized powder to people that are uh, honestly just getting started too. It's a mm -hmm. great thing if you're just getting started because you can, one, you can save some money on loading supplies on the front end. And then two, um, you can, uh, it, it's just easier. You don't have to worry mm -hmm. about measuring your loose yeah. powder. You don't have to worry about, you know, speed loaders and all that stuff. You just have your pelletized powder, you're able to toss it down the barrel. Um, so it's really good that way. But, um, Caleb was hoping you can dive into some of the differences between like, you know, the IMR white hots and fire stars, for instance. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So yeah, the IMR white hots for me, my personal opinion, um, <laughs> they're very efficient and they burn very hot. Um, again, they're, they're only in 50 grain increments. So you're getting either a 100 grain charge or a 150 grain charge per volume, which is good. You know, 150 grain charge of white hots is going to be your magnum load anyway. Um, and so the fire stars are really unique because um, when they came out, they're a 33 grain pellet mm -hmm. and you can put up to five pellets in there as per the manufacturer recommendation, of course, and that's going to be your magnum load. So because they're a smaller grained pellet, you can put up to five um, and they have a very unique design. They look like a star. They mm -hmm. have almost like these ridges that go around the outside and that's just going to help with efficiency is when that, when that primer ignites you know, the fire is going to efficiently ignite all five of the pellets at the same time, uh -huh. which just transfers into a more precise, efficient ignition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one thing I noticed, I was, we had some muzzle loaders that uh, hadn't been cleaned in a while. And, mm -hmm. you know, some of them were shot, you know, with different types of powder. One of them was with IMR White Hots. And I noticed like, man, this thing is dirty. Like mm -hmm. it was caked on there. Like it just hadn't been cleaned in a long time. And I was going through and cleaning it. 
And I was like, oh, this is probably not going to be good. You know, it just needs to be clean. And I was, I, the breech plug just had caked on residue mm-hmm. and stuff. I threw that in a part soaker and I ran a few patches down the barrel and the barrel was filthy, but it was clean within just a few swabs, you know, nice. and same thing with the breech plug. Like it, uh, you know, after being in the solvent, you know, you shake it around and you pull it out and it was clean. And so I think that's really cool about the iron white hots being clean burning. Um, yeah. is really the big thing with those. Um, and, uh, you know, we really like those. We highly recommend those. Yeah. Um, and so I guess talking about pellets versus loose powder, I mean, they both have their, their place. And I think that, you know, you have pelletized powder, you have loose powder measured by volume and you have loose powder measured by weight. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so those are just different levels of preciseness. And, um, you know, the pelletized powder is still very precise. It's going to perform the same, but, um, the tough thing is it is already preformed. So if you want to shoot, yeah. you know, like iron white hots come in a 50 grain increments so you could shoot 100 or 150 you can't really go in between unless you mix and match um but with loose powder you're able to be precise like that so that's really where the the big advantage comes from yeah i would say that like for most people pelletized powder is going to be fine yeah like if you're just shooting 100 yards you're in dense brush or you're you know want to reach out to 200 maximum you're Mm -hmm. not really looking for that precision save yourself the headache yeah. Do pelletize powder. Make yeah. it easy. It's simple. It drops right down there. There's no mess. It's just, you know, less stuff. You don't have to have a, a powder measure. None of that. Just yeah. get out and shoot. And if you're getting proficient accuracy at 100, 200 yards with pelletized powder, that's probably, you know, as good as, you know, that's you're going to get. Yeah. And I've, <laughs> I've even heard like even 300 yards with some of the, you know, like the Vortec and the Pro Hunter and stuff mm-hmm. like that. The they're getting accuracy out to those distances with mm-hmm. pellets. And so um, pelletized powder is really good. Um, it's just you don't quite have the versatility. Yeah. And yeah. so um, there's really advantages to both. They're both All of these powders have their spot, but um, that's kind of the, the information there. Um, and then also kind of something that's a very recent development is the fire stick ignition that's yeah. in the nitro fire. Um, that's like a encapsulated you know, uh, charge. Mm-hmm. It's pre-measured. You have 100 and 120 grains. Um, and it is similar in uh, composition to Blackhorn in performance, I should say. Yeah. Um, so you're going to you have 120 is going to be your magnum load. Um, and so, uh, Nate, I know you really like that design and have a lot of good information. I was hoping you could dive into that one. So yeah, absolutely. One of the cool things about the uh, fire sticks is they're just, it's a whole new powder designed specifically for this application. You know, mm-hmm. trip, yep. it's called triple eight uh, powder. It's, uh, you know, like you said, a whole lot closer to Blackhorn than, than anything else. Mm-hmm. And just a, a really solid, um, high um, efficiency powder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the other cool thing about the fire sticks is, you know, it's unique design, uh, allows you to not have to worry about moisture. You know, if you drop that thing in the snow, it's completely sealed, yep. you know, until yeah. that primer goes off in the back and busts through that tiny little barrier, mm-hmm. it's completely sealed, you know, you drop it in yeah. the snow or whatever, it's still good to go. Um, just a really unique design. Yep. And I think it adds a lot to the, uh, muzzle loader lineup. Yeah. I think that's one of the big complaints that we always get is, uh, the fact that, the powder or the powder gets wet you know Mm -hmm. even if it's humid it might not be raining but moisture still creeps in there and so that's a really big advantage with the fire stick and so yeah you're really excited about that one one quick thing about the fire stick that i love is because it's fully encapsulated if you um start off the day with an intention to take down a deer or whatnot and you don't run into anything at the end of the day you can literally break it open remove the fire stick um and use it for the next day, yeah. which yep. is which is usually unheard of because you'll have either your loose or pelletized powder in the in the muzzle loader. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, you either have to remove it, which mm-hmm. wastes the powder, yep. or shoot it, which wastes a bullet and powder, or leave it in there, which might draw moisture, and you won't know if it's going to be efficient ignition the next day. So the fire stick negates all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot safer. It, yeah, it's it's really nice. I think the compact design is nice too. I mean, you put mm-hmm. five, ten fire sticks in your pocket and it's no big deal as yep. opposed to having yeah. like those preloaders or whatever they're oh, pretty sure. cumbersome you know mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's cool because it it kind of harkens back to the older technology of using paper cartridges yeah. which there's a lot of cool history behind mm-hmm. paper cartridges and stuff like that and so you get something 
that's it's you know similar in design we've seen things like it but it's kind of a, a modern twist and so um yeah i just think it's cool that there's always you know there's always there's always something historical about muzzle mm-hmm. loaders which yeah. is awesome um and so yeah really excited about that and moving forward we're going to be talking about uh, our tech tip of the day which is going to be proper powder storage um and so that's a question we get a lot how yep. long will powder last how should i store it you know what you know what do i do there and caleb i know you field a lot of those questions so i was hoping you could <laughs> yeah. take this one over yeah and we've already touched on it earlier in the podcast the, the biggest concern that you have for storing powder is moisture mm-hmm. moisture getting in your powder container even though it's sealed and you tighten that down moisture will always get in there um so yeah the biggest thing that i would recommend is storing it in a very dry location um, with the help of a dehumidifier or silica packets um easy to get i, I know a lot of people will store their black powder in some sort of gun safe um, in, you know, the top shelf or whatnot that already has a dehumidifier in there. And it just, it just keeps the powder really dry. Um, And powder will last quite a long time. I always tell, I always tell our um, community members where you always see those old pirate movies where, or a new, a new movie where there's an old pirate ship they find and there's this old powder keg still there and it somehow a torch lights and it blows sure. up you know, <laughs> you know and that's hundreds of years it's been there you know powder will last a long time as long as you're putting in the preventative maintenance to to make it last so um yeah definitely use your dehumidifier use your silica packets and yeah they'll last uh, quite a long time yeah i think that's that's an important thing and i nate you're uh, really into reloading as well and so you store quite a bit of you know just smokeless powder um, and the store, I mean, honestly, the storage is similar. So how do you keep, uh, moisture out of your, your powders? Shh, don't tell anybody. I got lots of powder. It's, <laughs> it's a 2021, man. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, same thing. I, I like, I use a dehumidifier a lot. Uh-huh. You know, I have a, I have a massive dehumidifier where I keep my, my powder and stuff. And like you said in a previous podcast, it, it's amazing how much, <laughs> yeah. water comes out of the air you know and mm-hmm. yeah it just uh, buckets and buckets of it so yeah a dehumidifier is essential i think for keeping powder stored absolutely and i do want to make one thing clear but before we move on to our percussion caps uh is with powder we get a lot of questions like can you use smokeless powder in a muzzle loader and uh the question the answer to that is is no you know most muzzle loaders are not designed for that um and so you know there's really no reason you should be using that in your muzzleloader it's very unsafe and so i uh, just want to make sure we mention that as well yeah. because you know we are you know we talk about smokeless powder and stuff like mm-hmm. that on on the podcast sometimes but it's never in in reference to use with a muzzleloader yeah um, absolutely there's so. some great videos on youtube of what happens if you do yeah, yeah. <laughs> smokeless and, and powder. i reiterate i always tell customers if when they ask me that i say no absolutely not yes. like <laughs> that might seem harsh like i might be coming across very harsh but i i need to be it can be very dangerous yeah. if you use smokeless yep. powder in those so we just want not to be safe them. oh so, absolutely yeah. well, it's because we care about them you yeah know? and so it's like you know absolutely not never never use that um and so uh with that we'll kind of close the book on our uh powder conversation i do want to talk about percussion caps as well percussion caps different styles of ignition whether that's 209 and kale did touch on some of that earlier mm. uh with the black horn um, but, uh, something I want to talk about is the difference between specifically percussion caps. You have number 10, number 11 and musket caps, um, which all are different. They all have different applications. And so, uh, you know, typically your number 10s are going to be on pistols and stuff like that. And so Nate, I know that, uh, I was wondering if you wanted to do that section of it. Uh, yeah. So I obviously started off muzzle litter hunting, um, using a side lock with number 11s, uh, and uh, had a lot of disappointment with that. Sure. Not that they're <laughs> a bad ignition source. It's just that I was new to, to muzzle loader and sure. hunting and, uh, you know, had a lot of just pop, no ignition, deer yeah. goes running off. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, and the number 11, you know, a lot of, uh, side locks can be converted from number 11s to the musket caps, which are a little bit hotter ignition, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit easier to grab. You know, mm-hmm. some people have issues with those number 11s and how small they are. Sure. It's hard to get a hold of, or you open up the box and most of them come in a little tin thing and, you pop, yeah. and then 50 <laughs> of them land on the ground and there's deer in front of you. And you <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So uh, there are different types of number 11s as well. There's magnum number 11s, which also help your ignition a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. if you're using a true black powder uh 
you're not obviously not going to have as many misfires with the number 11s as if you're using a pirate x or, or ffg or triple f or whatever yeah. you're using as a substitute so yeah i mean those are a little bit of the differences there between the two yeah and then um number 10s oftentimes we get a lot of confusion you know on the phones with mm-hmm. number mm-hmm. 10s versus number 11s and Number 10s are specifically for pistols, so a lot of times your revolvers are going to mm-hmm. use number 10s. Um, and, you know, occasionally, like a Derringer will. Oftentimes, the Derringers will even use a number 11. Yeah. But revolvers are the big one that uses the number 10s, and so it's just important to to look into that and, and know what your muzzleloader shoots. So I, mm-hmm. I've had a lot of confusion um, with community members where they're like, oh, yeah, a number 11 percussion musket cap. It's like, no, no, <laughs> the yeah. number 11 is its own cap and the musket cap is different. Yeah. And as kind of you expounded on Nate, the, the number 11, you do see a lot of traditional style percussion muzzleloaders use that. Yep. Um, and the musket caps are larger. They're a larger yep. cap. They require a larger nipple. Um, a lot of the, I would say, if not all of the modern Northwest ignition rifles um, will feature a musket cap. Mm-hmm. Um, the, now. the musket yeah. now they will <laughs> exactly yes, and there's always um, a few oddballs in there, but yeah, now they've they've upgraded a lot of those in the CVA and Traditions line to have a musket cap. They're just a lot bigger. They like you said, they burn a lot hotter, and you're able to you know actually grab those. them. Yeah, they <laughs> actually grab them, yeah. and yeah, so there there is a difference between number 11s and musket caps, which a lot of people get get mixed up. So yeah, and then. Within musket caps, there's even some difference to where yeah. there, there's some musket oh, yeah. caps that are designed for shooting and hunting purposes, and then there's some musket caps that are designed for like reenacting purposes. Mm-hmm. And so if you know if you get those confused, you'll have a lot of, uh, like Nate was saying, you'll have a lot of pop and nothing, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. because they're just designed they're just have a different purpose, you know. And so um, just make sure you're getting the correct ones yeah. for those. Um, and then also kind of doing the same thing as you do with the powder, kind of moving from oldest to newest, uh, 209 primers, you know, that's, that's a big one right now. Hard to find. Yeah. Really important. Um, uh, most modern inlines are going to use a 209 primer ignition. Um, and so, and there's lots of different varieties of those right now. We've been recommending, like, if you see any primers, 209 primers, pick them up, you know, yeah. something's better than nothing, you know? Yeah. And so, um, just excited about, uh, you know, being able to talk about those. So, and I know a lot of our customers have questions about 209 primers and things like that. So, yeah. So, um, 209 ignition, like you said, is kind of the standard now for, for modern inline muzzleloaders. Um, I always recommend a 209 Magnum, Mm -hmm. um, cap or primer just because they ignite a little bit hotter. That's what I recommend for using Blackhorn 209, or if you're using any pelletized powder, just because they have that higher th- heat threshold, you need a slightly hotter ignition to properly ignite them. Yeah. Yep. Um, n- not all the time, but even if you think like, oh, well, one out of a hundred times, I'm going to get a hang fire. It's like, it's not worth it for me because mm-hmm. that's going to be the time where you have that once in a lifetime bull elk or deer in front of you. And that's the one in a hundredth time that you have the that hang fire. So always get that, that magnum primer in those scenarios. Um, but other than that, a standard 209 primer will work great for most applications. Uh, if you're using like a 777 or a Pyrodex loose powder or those Fire Stars, you know, we've had good results with just the standard 209 primers as well. Um, yeah. I would say I'd really wanted to piggyback on what you said, Darren, where primers and powder are both very hard to find. Yeah. And a lot of times people will base their ignition around the powder first. I would actually just be cautious of doing the opposite try to find what primers you can find first because there is going to be a powder that will work with the primer mm-hmm. but not always the inverse because mm-hmm. if, you, if you're like hey i found some black horn but if you can't find a magnum primer you might have a very hard time igniting the powder you bought but if you yeah. buy a primer no matter which primer that you find you can find a loose powder that will accommodate that yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's definitely good stuff right there um we're gonna jump to a break yep. uh, we're gonna have we have one more ignition system to go over and then uh we'll be just about ready to wrap things up so just stay tuned we have some good stuff all right thanks for sticking with us through that break um we're gonna be going over large rifle primers next so let's go ahead and do that there's a few different ignition systems with large rifle primers you have um you know like the vera flame you have 
the Remington 700 uses like a casing to ignite that. Mm-hmm. And so there's lots of differences and things like that. So if you can, if you want to go ahead and dive into those. Yeah. So um, the Veriflame, it, I wanted to touch on that first. So the Veriflame ignition system is seen in the CVA Paramount, Paramount HTR and the Paramount Pro. Um, and it's, it's an amazing system. So you basically have this little metal adapter, which the large rifle primer sits into, and then you put that into the bolt or the, the ignition, right? Um, and that's it. So, so what that little metal adapter is, is it channels the full force of the large rifle primer in through the flash hole into where your powder stored. And since you're most likely using Blackhorn 209, that's going to create that really hot, really efficient ignition. Um, and you're not getting a lot of, you're, you're not getting as much blowback because mm-hmm. that little metal adapter is channeling all of the fire into where the powder is. Um, and so, yeah, it's a great design. I know all of the, the Paramounts who use the Vera Flame um, will have kits to, to help you press the, the primers into the, the Vera Flame adapters and allow you to um, get the spent primers out of the adapters and all that good stuff. But, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a very, very efficient system. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when you're trying to ignite those larger quantities of Blackhorn. Oh, yeah. You know, make sure you have a good, efficient ignition for it. Um, and so, yeah, large rifle primer ignition is really great. So with that, I think we're going to jump into our product of the day, which is the Thompson Center Muzz Charger. And a uh, really awesome product. Uh, it's been around for a couple of years and just does a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, you're able to reload really quickly. And so uh, Nate has some stuff prepared that he wanted to go over with this one because I know he's a huge fan of this product. So Sure, yeah, this is just a great product. It allows you to store up to three pre-charged charges in there uh, with the bullet already in there. It's got a rod on it already, so you can just put it on the barrel. As soon as you turn that onto the barrel, it is going to dump whatsever, whatever contents is in there into the barrel. So you want to make sure you don't turn it and then put it over on the barrel or it'll end up on the ground. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, so you put it on there, you turn it and you just push that rod down and it puts everything in there. Uh, no need for a bullet starter or anything like that. It's all integrated, uh, super cool design. And, and, uh, you know, like I said, it allows you to store up to three charges, uh, which is really cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, it's really awesome product You're able to reload really quickly. Um, it's going to shave a lot of time off your reloads. So uh, with that, we're going to wrap things up. Really appreciate you guys joining us. If you have any questions in regards to this, I know we had a lot of really technical data today. Um, so if you have any questions in regards to that, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're always happy to chat, answer any questions that you have. And uh, remember, shoot straight, shoot often, and have a blessed week, everybody. <laughs>